I am thrilled to have here on the program. Um, um, let's just put it this way. Freddie Freeman isn't the first Dodger to a person in Los Angeles to sell out Dodger Stadium this year. It's this man. And not only just once, but they added a second show because Dodger Stadium, the largest Major League Baseball stadium in the United States, uh, sold out so quickly they added a second date, May 6th and 7th, right here in Los Angeles, California. Gabriel Iglesias, good to see you here, sir. Hello, good morning. Good to see you. This is awesome. <laughs> this awesome. is awesome. It's awesome to have you here. Thank you. You got it. Uh, Dodger, brother, congratulations on on that. So um, when's the first time you you ever went to Dodger Stadium? Uh, I was a time. kid. Uh, we won baseball tickets in a raffle, uh-huh. and my brother took me to a game. This is like... Uh, about 30 some odd years ago yeah and so who'd you say do you remember that i couldn't i want to say it was the astros i want to say it was oh, the so astros. they were cheating is what you're saying you know <laughs> is that wrong was that too quick right out. i'm just trying <laughs> too out. soon yeah. too soon no <laughs> i've been in los angeles too much alex bregman will never talk to me again but uh so you saw the astros 30 years ago in dodger stadium yeah at least at least 30 years ago and since then i've been to a bunch of different games Got a chance to catch uh, one of the World Series games against the Astros, ironically. Uh, (laughs) Have you done it? I won't say whether or not they were cheating. It might have been that day. It might have not. You just heard a loud bang. It was, yeah. I thought it was the sheriff's station next door. They got a gun range. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So have you ever done a first pitch? Have you ever done a first pitch? I've done a couple of first pitches, which is cool. But uh, I didn't try to go out there and make a point. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that will do the first pitch. And they're, I guess they're trying to get discovered as they're, they're trying to live out their high school fantasy of whatever. Yeah. And I just want to get it to the plate. And so know? what happened? What did we do? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I wasn't trying to, you know, I wasn't trying to freaking throw my arm out. I'm 45, <laughs> man. I'm not 25. I got nothing to prove. You know, it went from A to B. I didn't want to be like 50 cent and hit hit the, you know, oh my hit God. the guy selling popcorn. I'm, the, not, I'm not trying to do that's that. That's right. What was it one guy one year, Chris? Somebody hit, hit a, a photographer in the nuts or something like that? The in mayor Boston, of Cincinnati or something? Or something? I feel I like he had happened. a terrible yeah, one Yeah, you don't, well. you don't want to do that. No, no. And by the way, if you can aim and hit a photographer, from the nuts you, you got a whole different skill by the way that's a <laughs> whole different skill i know kanye wishes he had that skill <laughs> it takes the ceremony out of the first pitch when you do just that, a though. Di- just it's, a little it, bit it becomes a little bit more serious so uh when uh, how did uh, um a dodger stadium gig come to be how did that first happen uh well I, I think it's like anything you know you start off at a certain place and then once you outgrow that then you go to whatever's next and then you outgrow that and you go to whatever's next so originally starting off in here in los angeles yeah doing shows in garages and, and next to swimming pools performing outside of a <laughs> and patios and just yeah. wherever i could do shows because in the beginning i wasn't allowed to perform in comedy clubs you had to be t- over 21 and I started when I was 20, so I had a year of just trying to find a gig doing anywhere, doing anything for anyone. And I didn't say no, no. I didn't say no to anything. And just little by little, eventually got into clubs, then eventually got into theaters, then into arenas. And then it was, you know, we did two Staples Centers when it was Staples Center. Yes. And so we're like, now that we're back from COVID, uh, we have been out of the market for a while. So we said, let's try to do something that's, that, that outdoes that last thing we did. And Netflix reached out and had this idea about Dodger Stadium. And I'm like, well, we had been talking about wanting to do something that's the next level, and well, let's why not? It's a, it's a, you know, it's a good risk. Right. And then uh, who's the one who's called you up and said, hey, we got to do another one. We got to add another date. Oh, uh, I think that I was mean, me. Once we sold out, I'm like, yeah, we need a second one because there's still there were still two about, months left. So I, I was like, so, so I guess who's the one who called you up and said you're sold out? Because I, I, I'd imagine again, I know you're. That would be my very, manager. His name's Joe Malash. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give him a little, so, a little shout out, Joe. Okay. Put your name out there so people start. But calling that'd you. be so cool for you, though. <laughs> that had to be amazing, though. I can only imagine. You know, look, I, I know you're incredibly successful, but I mean, when you say I want to go fill up the house in Dodger Stadium, you know, a, just your first thought might have to be, okay, let's see how it goes, and then you get now you have to do two. That's so cool. That it's incredible. Like yeah, a, like it's, and it set. still hasn't registered, but I, I know it's going to be something that I'm never going to forget. It's the biggest thing I've ever done in my career, and the best part is that it's 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 home. So if the show goes great, awesome, and if it sucks, then it's a short drive to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> All about the traffic, is, and you can't leave early. Like you can't like leave Dutch early to beat the traffic. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you can't leave early to beat the traffic. I've got Gabriel Iglesias here on the Rich Eisen show. Okay, so. Um, you're you're gonna be doing Dodger Stadium. That is so cool. How how did you you just said you you had to get I guess you got carded when you were starting your career. How did you get started? When did you get? Uh, I started April tenth of nineteen ninety seven. Remember uh, the date? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. you just my, had your anniversary. My anniversary was on Sunday. Twenty five years. So I think it's kind of cool. Wow. Twenty five years. You know, usually twenty five years equals retirement. 
And for me at this point, it equals the biggest thing I've ever done. So I, I still think I got some uh, gas left in the tank to keep going a little bit more. Right. Uh, but yeah, I started uh, back in 1997. There was no social media, uh, which I think is cool because I know the world of being an entertainer with social media. And I know and I remember what, what it was like without. And it's a double edged sword. Yes. So I appreciate it and respect it for what it is. But I also know it's kind of scary. OK. And so you got who was your first, what was your first gig? Like, who are you? My first gig. Who would you open for? I didn't open for anybody. I was uh, I was just trying to do shows wherever I could. My first gig was in uh, Long Beach. Uh, I went up on stage. The uh, MC for a show didn't show up one night, and I was pushed up on stage because a buddy of mine said, you had always wanted to be a comedian. Right. Here's your chance. They need somebody. Go. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I went up there, and fortunately, uh, it's a fight or flight, and I flew. So So who? why, why did you always want to be a comedian? Who is it was something that I just loved. I was a little kid watching Eddie Murphy Raw, which is probably not what you should be watching <laughs> at 10. Uh, yeah, a 10-year-old at home babysitting himself. I was a latchkey kid, which I think now is called abuse. Um, <laughs> I was home by myself watching Eddie Murphy Raw, and I was inspired. To, I like. I want that. I want to be able to go up on stage. I want to do voices and characters and have fun and have people just cheering. And, and I really loved everything about it. And so I got a chance to do a school talent show, and it went over well. I just did impressions. And basically, I was imitating Eddie Murphy without, without the cuss words. Right. And uh, it went over really well. And I knew that I had something there. And then, you know, years later, I got to go up on stage and, uh, like, do it for real. Yeah. And I just I never stopped. Have you ever crossed paths with Eddie Murphy? I've never crossed paths with Eddie Murphy in 25 years. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, similar friends. You know sure. what I mean? But I've never had, had an opportunity to meet him. All right. I mean, one day, Eddie, no, come on. You never know. I mean, um, so, okay. Then, and so who was the first, what was the first big break then for you? First big break. Oh, yeah. there's a lot of those, uh, you know, a lot of steps. The first time I got to be on Comedy Central, um, it was on a TV show called Make Me Laugh, which was an old show from the 70s and 80s. I remember that. And they brought it back. And, I remember uh, the, the guy who was hosting was Bobby Van back in the day when I, because I'm 52. I remember watching Make Me Laugh and that was something that I always thought would be so difficult to do, right? I mean, obviously, when you're doing stand-up, it's make me laugh every night. You mm -hmm. just don't see the people, you know, through the, because the light's on. Yeah, you you're not two feet them. away from them. That's right. And, and then they're not also sitting there and saying, make me laugh. They've already paid money, so you figure that they're there to laugh, yeah. right? And, and the whole premise of the show uh, is basically, and you already know, uh, yeah. it's one-on-one, -on -one, so... You have to run out in front of the the person who's sitting in a chair, and this person's being paid not to laugh. Yes. They get rewarded for not laughing, and you got to stand in front of them and try to make them laugh. And you yes. have one minute to do it. So yes. if you can crack them, then they don't get paid. But if they stay stone faced, then yeah. then they make money. So that's a lot of extra pressure. I would agree. Yeah, I know. Okay, so then you've done that, and I, I, I'm I'm so thrilled. So now that you're in a in a Dodger stadium, let's say you're going, what is your pet peeve? at a ball game when you're a fan? Oh, man. Like, what drives you nuts? Yeah, well, and know. it's hard because people are excited. Uh, people right next to you or behind you screaming just yeah. random things. Right. And it's you can't help it. You're at a game. That's that's what you're supposed to do. So it's kind of like, uh, all right, okay. Oh, for me, anyway, uh, yes. the main one is when I go to the bathroom and people want to have full-blown conversations, <laughs> when I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to make this happen. You know, and it's one thing if you're standing, but when you're sitting, that's a whole different level of concentration <laughs> that I need. And they want to have full blown conversations about that. And I'm just like, ah, when you're doing one, is well, it both one and two, because, wow. you know, if they see on. me, they, if somebody will see me going into the stall, that that's just because the door closes doesn't mean that I'm closed off. You know, there's still that space underneath. And I've had people go, Yoo and I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't know, because to me, <laughs> all right, we're well, put the camera underneath, and I'm just like, oh my god. While we're on the subject can I get a here, quick selfie. Yeah, can I get a no? Seriously, people, I've done so many restroom selfies. <laughs> oh, to me, gosh. to me, and I, I will go here right now. I mean, we're the, the if the figurative door is open here, Gabriel Iglesias. Um, that if I'm going into a stall at a public event, there's something seriously up that requires commitment for me to actually do this thing and i think that would automatically show that you don't want to be bothered at all am i wrong yeah i got a situation yeah i need my five ten minutes right yeah at a public spot right you know where a there's game like a game or a concert yeah, or if wherever, it's a game there's a hundred people like, in there on. too at least it's, right? there's constantly people coming in and out you know going in and out but uh, for me like i have to seriously be at the point where i have no no self-control in me 
to have to go do that because you know you don't want to go at a, at a anywhere public you don't want to go you want to go at home you want to go at home where you can take where you can get butt naked and just sit there you know and start the dog if you got one and just be like yeah i know um and then you can jump in the shower straight you know wash off the shame but, but when you're at a, a public event like that you, yeah. you don't want to have to go in there and if you do you just know like oh i just need to do this as quick as possible i don't want to be in here but sometimes people don't respect that little door that little wall no you know? no and, so, and you strike me again um as one of the most well-adjusted comedians I've ever met. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and so uh, you probably want to give your fan who's coming up to you what they want. But at this point in time, though. And I'll even tell them. I'll, I'll tell them, hey, let me finish this mission. And when I come <laughs> out, you are going to get the happiest, freshest dude. Just give me, you know, just give, give me a couple minutes, please. Give me Oh my and say, but at an event like that, there's so many people, and then then they'll say, "Well, I got to get back to my seat." Well, I'm sorry, I got to I got to pinch one off, you know. It's just <laughs> I, I don't even want to be in here. But yes, that's a pet peeve, okay. But nothing at a game or anything like that. No, nah, not Down really. Down in I front, mean, nothing like that sort of business. Oh, any, really? you know, sitting uh, if you have a, a seat, I mean, anywhere to ballpark okay. is is a good seat. Okay, look at you. Uh, who's your favorite Dodger? Who's been your Who's your favorite Dodger of all time? Like I, your guy, I, I, your guy, Gabriel. I'm, try, I'm trying to say his, his name right, so I don't mess up. Uri, Urias, uh-huh. Urias, and that's probably because I got to throw the pitch at him. Is that right? Oh, nice. Is that so? That was cool. He's the one who caught it for yeah, you. Yeah, he's the one that caught it. Okay. And then he came up to me and started speaking Spanish, and I'm like, "Yes, I speak Spanish." Mira, no más, este, me gusta. you know. So we started talking Spanish and stuff, and then everyone was like, "What are they saying?" And we're like, "Yeah, we're we're making plans." <laughs> <laughs> he was he was very cool, very nice. Look at the photo right there. So you got the glasses, you got it all there, and th- this is the one where you lobbed it in. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, one the one year I did the uh, the uh, first pitch, Chris was there. Um, there was uh, a an uh, well, I guess it was an outfielder turned. It was, was a back, catcher. Was a turned, backup catcher. Backup yeah. catcher, uh, soon to become the closer, Kenley Jansen, and it was again. You got an actual star pitcher of the Dodgers. To catch you, they sent some scrub out to catch Sorry. me. <laughs> but the way no, the way I look at it though is I turned him into a star. There you go. He's, that's what, that's a great way to put it. That's the way. Uh, there's no question in my mind that after uh, Kenley Jansen caught my cheese that was awful, that he sat there thinking, "I will never let this happen again. I need to become a star closer and never have to do this again." So I think I inspired him. That's the way I look at that. Thank you, Gabriel. I appreciate that. What was Magic Mike XXL like, man? Oh, that wow. Is... I did not expect that question from you. Um, <laughs> what? Magic Mike. Uh, <laughs> How about that one? I got to do, uh, I got to do uh, both Magic Mikes, the first one and the second one. And uh, I'm, I'm the only actor in the film that didn't get naked, so you're welcome. <laughs> I tell people it's called Magic Mike, not Tragic Mike, so we don't right. need to open that door. Um, being in that film was, was something else because, I mean, I love the fact that they had to be very strict with their diets. And so craft services was very interesting because you'd see one table covered with just like straight up vegetables, no dressings. I mean, they had to eat super clean in order to stay looking the way that they did. They were working out all day long. They had rubber bands and weights the whole time we were on set and eating the food. But then right next to that was the other table for the non-naked actors. And that was that was a good time because I didn't have to share. (laughs) <laughs> so that's where you got your feedback on on that front? nice <laughs> is that what it was so manganello and everybody else is just all all of them they had to stay very strict and it was funny because on the last day of filming the first magic mike yes um matthew mcconaughey actually ordered uh god like 20 bags of rallies for all the guys to eat just they were eating so clean that on that last day as soon as they yelled it's a wrap all the food came ah all the food came. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And they're like, you're not eating? Dude, I ate all freaking the whole time. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, man. Those movies were great. Yeah. And Soderbergh is, is a, you know, is a decorated director that you can possibly have. So yeah. And he's a big cool. fan of Volkswagens. Uh, yeah, that's, oh, is that that's, right? yeah. He's got a Volkswagen. I, I want to say it's a 1960. I could be wrong. Uh, Bug, he would drive this same car mm-hmm. to the set every single day. And we were waiting like, okay, that's the... That's his Monday car. Let's see what he brings on Tuesday. Yeah. And it was the same car and same car Wednesday and Thursday. And I'm like, I found it interesting that he was only driving that car. Mm-hmm. That's his daily driver. Right. And did you ask him about it? Yeah. We're, he's just, he just loves them. And I'm, you know, I, this was before I started collecting Volkswagens. Yeah. And so it was one of those like, okay, I get it. But uh, it's not very 
reliable. I mean, it's an old car, and you right. know, you spend more time pushing it than you do, you know, <laughs> riding in it. So you collect Volkswagen? Now, yes. Is what you said? I have a collection of about thirty Volkswagen buses. Buses. Wow. Yes. Twenty twenty one and twenty three window buses. What do you do with them? It's a museum. I built a museum at my house. What? I know there's random things right here. You thought I just got naked in movies, or not really. Uh, no, I'm a big Volkswagen collector. Uh, I got started uh, through Jay Leno. Jay Leno uh, inspired me to start collecting cars. Yes. Uh, he says, what are you doing with your money? And I go, well, you know, I'm just kind of, he goes, well, if you've ever thought about, you know, cars, he says, it's a great investment. Uh, you get to enjoy it, and you get to see where it's at at all times. Right. And I figured since I didn't have a cocaine habit, I, I might as well spend it somewhere. <laughs> and, and so I started collecting Volkswagen buses, and now I have literally a museum. Of cars. Do you drive one regularly? I drive. I drive all of them a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, clearly the there's only uh, so many miles you can go before you, there's yes. questions and issues. Uh, <laughs> and I've broken down in pretty much all of them. And the one that I thought was dependable left me in San Juan Capistrano. So yeah, fortunately, oh. you make friends with tow truck drivers. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, can you? Do, well, um, no, there's no three A's in your name. Okay. Otherwise, that, that Trip, yeah, yeah Trip, you Triple A and that. Hey, man! Uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Anytime you want to come and back in here, you're more more than welcome. Anytime. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. And I know I said this off air, but this place is way bigger in person because you see it on TV and it like it looks massive. It really is. It's it's <laughs> it's a nice little <laughs> man cave that it's we built big. here, and yeah. it's filled with stuff that my wife says, you know where that would look better? Not over here. there. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> It's filled with stuff that I, you know, thank goodness we have it because I don't know where I'd put any of this the stuff. The biggest flex I ever put in my man cave was a urinal, FYI. I just thought I'd let you know. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes, a urinal because I could not have one at home. Is that right? Yeah. So She said, this is not a truck stop. I do not want a urinal here. I said, all right. Well, I get up a lot at night to pee, so good luck in the morning. <laughs> 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 Rich, I'm Fantastic. looking at the the, the fluffy yes. museum with yes. all the V dubs, and yeah. man, this is this is impressive. There's a black and red VW bus. Okay. Or this one. Some of these are incredible, man. Okay. It is literally a museum. Fantastic. It really is. Well, great, man. Congratulations on that again. Uh, the dates at Dodger Stadium, May sixth and seventh. I don't know. I'm giving them out because they're all sold out. But you're going to Vegas this weekend, Macon, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, and the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans. Coming up uh, the week after that, fluffyguy.com for more tour dates and ticket information for Gabriel Iglesias. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.